everybody. Uh, welcome to Hey Man. I'm Josh. Uh, Jacob is not in today. Uh, not feeling up to it. So just me and you guys. But I'll tell you what. I mean, it doesn't. I mean, it bothers me because I don't see Jacob. But you know how much I like to talk. So I think this, I don't, I'm not sure there'll be any dead air. <laughs> I might just take one deep breath and go for an entire hour. I was going to wear these red glasses, but I, I honestly can't read my phone with them on and I'm going to have to do some reading off the phone today. We're going to answer some of your questions. I'm going to scroll through TMZ and just comment on stories as I see them. Uh, somebody sent me a weird shit story. We'll talk about that. Um, but I, I asked you guys to answer some questions for me, not answer some, ask me some questions. So we'll do some of that. But first and foremost, guys, yesterday, uh, here in Vegas, Jacob and I went to this champs trade show, which they call counterculture. It's so weird, by the way, doing this by myself. I don't know what to look at. Look straight into the camera. Look up, look across like Jacob's there. This is really confusing. All right. Well, the ADD is going to catch up to me. We'll try the camera first. Um, so I honestly, we went to this trade show. It's called the counterculture. Um, I was going down there. I was going to, uh, I'd reached out to my buddy, Lil White, and he was down there. He's got, dude, his white flower, which is real close to white power, but his white, <laughs> I hadn't thought of it until I said it out loud. <laughs> Yo, White, if you're listening to this, dude, I just, it's, hey, anyways, his white flower weed is exceptional. And I just learned about this THCA stuff amazing. We'll get into that. Also a huge announcement. The high live is coming back. Everybody, for those of you who watched and listened to the high live, it is coming back. It'll now be a live show where you can get tickets to it here in Vegas, but we will also stream it live. We'll still be giving out gifts, doing silly shit. High live is coming back. Um, but this THCA, this convention, man, there, it was down at the Vegas convention center. And so THCA basically is weed. It's THC, except it, they, they don't let the, the plant mature. That sounds dirty, but it isn't. So it's like, it's like young flower. So they pick it and it turns into THC as soon as you light it. But when you don't light it, it's legal because it's not THC. What? Yeah, dude. The way somebody explained it to me yesterday was if you had a peanut M&M, right? And you lit the, heated it up and the chocolate melted off, you'd still have the peanut. That's the whole thing with the THCA. Crazy, right? So what we got now is we got legal. The, you, you could sell THCA in the 7-Eleven, in a liquor store. They put, this year, they've put billions of dollars into it, guys, because it is legit. If you see THCA in your state, that is weed. Straight up weed. That The Little White's weed, White Flower, the one that I smoked yesterday, I got so high. Now, to be fair, I haven't smoked in probably 10 days and no coffee and more. Um, for those of you who didn't know, I've been having a little acid reflux that it's, I have it whether I eat, whether I don't eat, whether I, I just have it all the time, no, no matter what I eat. So the thinking is that it's stress induced and, um, it's so funny that you can be stressed out, but I don't feel stressed out, but Obviously I am. So I've been dealing a little bit with that. Um, I'm not sure why I said that. My brain is already bouncing out. You had not smoked in a while. Oh, I hadn't smoked in a while. Thanks, man. Matt is going to be here <laughs> to remind me of why I started talking about things. Uh, but I hadn't smoked in a while. Um, and you know what I think I'm going to do for the high live? I, I, I think because this week got me extra high. I think I'm going to... Um, lay off weed a little more during the week so I can get higher with you guys on the high live. But the guests that are lining up for this high live are legit ski. Cannot wait for it to start. I uh, cannot wait to tell you who I'm partnering with all exciting shit. Also one last reminder, man, two things. I'm going to be in LA August 21st for haunted homies. 
me, Trevor Wallace, uh, Elton Caste. Who else is on that show? Um, it's a great show. Morgan J and our buddy Yola is going to be there. Uh, Haunted Homies at the Improv on the 21st in Hollywood. And this is, I'm fucking so excited for, on August 24th in Palm Springs, we're basically doing our first mini festival. Me and Yola. It'll be a full day at the 420 Bank. He's doing a podcast where I'm the, uh, Jacob and I are the guests, and then we're going to do a comedy show after. You can either buy tickets to just the podcast. You can buy tickets to just the, the um, comedy show. You can buy a discount ticket for both. You can also buy VIP meet and greet, and you can buy VIP P. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it'd be VVIP, I think. Very, very important person. It wouldn't be very important person, person. VIVVP, whatever. Uh, where you, we're going to be at the 420 bank all day. We're going to be playing video games, playing pool, playing ping pong. It is your chance to have a smoke session with me, Jacob, Yola, Marty. If you don't know who Marty is, he's the dude who is in Back to the Future. Um, but if you want to come, it is going to be a one of a kind experience. The tickets are super, super reasonable for the one shows and for the VIP, you know, it's not that bad either. Actually for a full day is $150, but come through and that includes both shows, meet and greet pictures, smoking with us, all the games. Anyways, today on the pod, here's what I thought I would do. It's like old school. For those of you who have followed me for a long time, when I used to do these pods by myself and I would just turn on the mic and just start talking about whatever ridiculous shit came to my brain. But today, I think what we're going to do, I reached out to on my Facebook page uh, right before the podcast and asked you guys to send in some questions. Uh, I'm going to give you about a half an hour for those to load up. Uh, in the meantime, I thought I would go through TMZ and just look at some headlines and just see if any catch my eye. And I love this riff kind of stuff. Um, I, I'll, I'll, I do also want to say that my oldest son had a baby. A uh, baby, a uh, little baby. We we're super excited about it. And um, so I am a grandpa. I don't know if you guys know this, but if anybody calls me grandpa in public, I will actively shit on your lawn. I do not answer to grandpa. Uh, for those of you who know, I, I went through a little bit of a process of picking my grandpa name. Uh, my son turned down my first offer, which was LeBron. He said that is unacceptable. I thought it would be pretty great uh, for just us to be in like Applebee's and have a little kid be like LeBron and everybody would be like, get the LeBron's here. And then I show up and he was not happy that I was turning his uh, everything into a joke, but he obviously doesn't remember how he was raised, but I went with Jojo. So I'm Jojo and Beth is baby. And this is our fifth grandkid. For those of you guys who don't know, this is our fifth grandkid. So, but if anybody calls me grandpa out in the, out there in them streets, I am going to defecate on something you own. All right, let's get into this TMZ and let's see about some fun stuff. I, I do miss Jacob, uh, in his urban dictionary terms. That was fun. And I do miss bothering him already. I miss bothering him, Matt. <laughs> I miss bouncing my pecs cause I know it'll bother him. I met, I, and you know, what's funny. Sometimes I do it like in mid sentence. So Jacob hates this shit. Sometimes I do it mid sentence. Cause I know he's looking at me and I just kind of sneak a couple in and, and it makes him so mad. Oh, I love bothering people. <laughs> All right, everybody, let's get to the TMZ. Uh, and then we'll get to your questions. I like this. And this is going to be a fun loosey goosey show. Okay. Oprah and Gail King. We would tell you, we'd tell you if we were lesbians, first of all, yuck. What? Hey, can I, can I just tell you the last two people that I think I would want to see go down on each other are Oprah and Gail, a 69 of Oprah and Gail. Uh, that is not. Mm -mm. Yeah, dude, please tell me you're not lesbians. That's what I want to know. That's not. This is not the image that I am looking for, for either one of you two. I just, although I will say this, 
as far as if somebody said to me, and when I was younger, when people were like, if you could have sex with one person in the world, who would it be? I always, my friends always picked like really gorgeous women. And I picked Oprah, not saying Oprah isn't attractive, but you know, uh, I would pick Oprah because I like stories and what story beats I fucked Oprah. I mean, I, I, they would be like, yeah, but yeah, but I could stop every story. Every, I could like, if I'm at a party and somebody's telling a story and telling me, yeah, I could be like, oh, yeah, yeah. I could tell you about that time I fucked Oprah. Everybody's like, yeah, let, let's stop all the other stories and let's hear Josh's. This is, it's for the story guys. I mean, because I know some people picked like, I, like one of my buddies picked uh, Selma Hayek and yeah, dude, Selma Hayek is my, is the, for me outside of Beth, the apex, right? But I don't think that story catches your attention, although it would catch mine. I, I might be retreating a little bit, although having sex with Oprah feels like the best story. I mean, I would ask her if it was an aha moment. I would just be, I'd be, <laughs> I'd be having sex with her and I'd be like, you get a dick and you get a dick and you get a dick and you get a dick. <laughs> Come on, man. Tell me what story beats I had sex with Oprah. I don't think you got one, but I don't really. I Listen, even if they are lesbians, who cares? is really my real honest human take. I don't want to know. I don't need to know. If you want to tell me your sexuality, that's fine. But I don't need to know because I don't give a shit who you have sex with. I'm not sure why people are so fixated on who other people are having sex with. I, it has always been of my opinion. Any dude who's always been like, dude, yeah, there's a gays and a fucking gays just wants to suck a dick like the more the look the the dude who talks about how tough he is is the least tough and the dude who talks about how much he hate gays wants a dick on his cheek so desperately that's my opinion if you care that much be there's so much it's so close love and hate are so close now indifference when you're indifferent i know you really don't care but hate means you kind of love it I kind of want a little bit of that, you know? Anyways, yeah, Oprah and Gail, I, I, I don't care if you're lesbians, but please don't tell us if you are. I don't need the visual, to be quite honest. Those are some... <laughs> Those are four floppy titties, though. <laughs> they, they would... You might feel like you're getting attacked by like 12 dudes. <laughs> They're just bap, 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 just smacking you all over the place. Anyways, I'm probably going to get some flack for that, but whatever. Uh, all right. This is, um, we're going to skip past the Elon Musk stuff. Um, okay, let's see what else we got. Tom Brady, I'm single as fuck, not dating an SI model. Yeah, dude, why would, again, let me, again, not sure why we're so obsessed with who people are dating. But if I'm Tom Brady, I'm not settling. I'm not, what, dating? I, listen, dude, I, I'm coming out with TB12 condoms as part of my wellness program. And I'm, I'm, when you, I'm rolling them down. Are you kidding me? I, if I'm Tom Brady, I am going straight Derek Jeter. And I'm giving people gift bags after they leave my house. They, that was the rumor that Jeter did. Did you hear about that? He, he would give you a gift bag, and one of it was like an autographed baseball. It's amazing. But that, I mean, that's a rumor, but I love that rumor. So here's what I'm going to say. If I think Tom Brady, why would he settle down? He just got out of, a, I don't know how many year marriage. He's not having more kids. He dedicated his life to getting hit by 300 pound grown men. They've been laying on top of him for the last 20 years. He, I think he just wants to lay on top of some lighter people and lots of them. And I don't blame him. If I'm Tom Brady, are you kidding me? I'm actually, you know, one of those revolving glass doors that 
they have in at like at the bottom of an office building, I might want to put one of those in my house. I might actually have time in my Google Meet. I might have time codes like uh, for like my eight o'clock, my eleven o'clock, and my three o'clock. And I'm not spacing them out because I need rest. I'm spacing them out so they don't run into each other. <laughs> but yeah, man, why would this dude? Yeah, come on. Samurai sword attack woman arrested for wife's death. I'm interested. Can I tell you an honest story about that? Hap okay. I call it the luxury apartments. When I lived in LA, there was this dude on our floor. Now our apartment building was bananas. We had a drug dealer at three floors. We had a drug dealer on every floor. And, uh, the second floor drug dealer only dealt in weed. We had a woman down the hall who was dating David Arquette. And I said, dating she, this poor lady. Man, she was like a huge star in Montreal and she came here and she couldn't get a fucking role. And she ended up, um, I think she ended up stripping at a place called the Seventh Veil, but was just down the hall with her little kid. There were these two heroin addicts, these women next to me who are heroin addicts who sold Omaha steaks. <laughs> And sometimes they would buy the steak and then they would take a bunch of heroin in their house for a few days, but they would leave the steak out on the counter, would go bad and their house smelled. You know who else I saw walking down that hallway? It, allegedly Puck from real world. Remember Puck? Nah, you're too young. Puck from the real world. Early on Puck. He was on with Pedro, Pedro and Puck. Uh, but also in this hall was a dude who was one of the extras on Star Trek Generation, and he was Next Generation, and he was a Klingon. So he would come home in his Klingon makeup sometimes. He didn't take it off. And it, there would just be this dude in a bathrobe taking out his trash who looked like a Klingon. It was kind of crazy. But he was a little weird, and he would wear a sword around the hallway with his Klingon outfit and his robe and take out the trash, and it was a bizarre place. But he ended up getting arrested in his Klingon um, makeup one day because he had stabbed a hooker at the park with his sword. He went to the park to meet a hooker in his Klingon face with the sword. She must have been like, what the fuck? And I'm sure she was not into it. And I'm sure that angered him a little, but yeah, that's where I lived. And this woman here, by the way, this woman here, you can't, I, I have a little bit of respect for the killing with the samurai sword, not the killing part, but it feels like more gnar, like you're, you really don't like somebody. I think if you kill them with a sword, a gun feels easy, but a sword I, -ya! I don't feel like I could do it. I, I honestly, like I think about how they fought wars way back when. W w Civil War to me is bananas. World War I bananas. You just run across a field towards people with guns, screaming. Ah! What? I mean, that's crazy, right? Like, like that, because you... You have to convince somebody to go first. Hey, you guys are first. What? Hey, you are. No, you guys, you're the screaming guys first. Why, why are we going to? Because I'm sure that first line, especially in the Civil War, not that they were shooting super accurate, but, you know, they had to load the, that's the bad meme for me, but they had to load the musket, you know? So that first line was like, you knew that second line. I got a little time. But you know who really fucking must have hated it was the piccolo guy. The dude who had to come out with the piccolo and the flag guy and the drum dude walking out first. They were like, this seems, can't we just stand on the side and play the music? Why are we going to walk right towards the bullets? But the screaming, like, like, like the Bra Braveheart, you know, when they just run across the field into arrows and flame, that type of manhood, I'm not close to. I'm just not, I'm not close to that. I, I, I'm way more of a pussy than I would like to be. Now I've, I've pretended for a lot of my life that I'm not, but I am, I am way more of a pussy than I would like to be. I can deal with certain, certain pain 
the, the, here's what's weird about me. Like I can deal with pain. Like I had this giant hammer toe for a long time and I could deal with that. Like that type of pain, that sharp or like a, like a muscle pull or a sprain or like maybe I could deal with it because I'm used to it with injuries from playing with sports and I could kind of deal with that kind of pain. But like this heartburn or, you know, um, getting something like I got my butt, like waxed a any kind of beauty, like, I uh, uh, I'm not out. I, I, that kind of pain. I don't like a pluck. I don't fucking like a pluck. Don't pluck me. I had, I had my, um, Sunspots, you know, they burn, they laser it off. They that, 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 that. I was whining like the biggest pussy in the entire world. Beth had just done it. She's fine. The highest temperature. Sunspots, getting rid of them. And then I get in there and one zap, I'm like, fuck it. I don't want to do that. She's like, it's the lowest time. I'm like, I don't give a shit. I don't like it. I don't know why some, for some reason, for some things, I'm the biggest pussy, but some things, you know, not so much. Um, okay. Let's, uh, let's get to your questions. The first question, um, which I really did enjoy. Um, and it's not funny. It's just a good question. Well, not a good question, but a question that I like to answer. I don't know how to qualify good or bad, but this dude, first of all, let's go. The first question was from Scott. When are we getting a Josh Wolf workout book? Listen, dude, I am going to start a podcast that is about health, my health. I, I, what I've learned so much, I've learned so much, guys. I've learned so fucking much over the last year. And I think the thing that I've learned the most is that we're all different and that there's no one size fits all for health, there are some things that definitely everybody needs to do or shouldn't do and all this stuff. But outside of that, like, so it's so much of, of it is like, you, what how, you have to be honest with yourself. How much, how much, how much time, what are your expectations and how much time and effort are you willing to put in? I think, you know, with anything in your life, you see results when you put energy and focus behind it. So the big thing is, and I used to train people and I would tell them is just, just don't lie to yourself. That way you won't be disappointed. What are you realistically willing to do? Are you not willing to cut out soda and pizza? Well, then you might get stronger, but your body's not probably going to not going to look the way you want it to look unless you're 21, you know, and then you eat whatever the fuck you want. But I would just tell you this, man, set realistic expectations. I am going to do a kind of a health podcast because people have been asking me a lot of these questions lately. But I would say my mental health right now is even better than my physical health. And that has never been the case for me in my entire life. In my entire life, that's never been the case for me. So I'm really excited. I'm happy to share it with you. But I would say there is no one size fits all. You got to try a bunch of things. This goes with supplements too. But you got to try a bunch of things before you know what works for you. I would also say, don't worry about supplements. If you're not eating well and exercising supplements, don't do you any good at all. Uh, vitamins, you need them, but don't be like, should I take creatine or collagen? No, you should do these. Uh, you should work out before you do any of those two things. So, but, 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 um, but yeah, that's coming, Scott. I appreciate the question. All right, Jen, this is the first time I'm reading these. Does Jacob have any desire to learn any musical instruments? Does he change words to songs when you're on the road trips? Let me tell you something, Jen. We tried to get Jacob into, into the into taking a musical instrument. When he was like 12, we got him one of those giant. I was like, dude, you're gonna take an instrument. He was like, okay. And he chose the giant stand-up bass because it didn't fit in the car. So he knew he wouldn't have to take it home. <laughs> Genius move. And, but what the couple times we he was like, I can't get in the car. And I'm like, you're you're right, damn it. You know. So it was such a genius G move on Jacob Wolf's part that he was like, it's hard for me to practice. I can't take it home. So then we tried to get him into these guitar lessons with my buddy, Charlie Turner. And he did it for like, it just wasn't his thing. He never really took to a musical instrument. He liked athletics. He liked sports and hang out with his friends, you know? Um, 
And does he change words to songs? He's written a couple. He wrote a song about me um, that was really funny. Um, and he comes on stage with me and sings every now and then. But I think he and I are going to do a couple more things together. He's really expanding his brain in a way I wasn't sure he was going to be able to do. And he's done it and run with it with fucking flying colors. So super excited for you guys to see what's coming up for him. How old were you when you decided to become a comedian as a career? Ooh, Mark. Well, man, I would say that's a tough question. The first time I did it, I was 15 and I knew I loved it. And then I did it a couple more times in college and loved it. And then I left college for a year and went out to LA and, and uh, really shit the bed hard. Couldn't get stage time. Didn't quite understand what it was like to, uh, to write. I hadn't, here's the thing, man. I, I did all that in Seattle, right? I went up there and learned how to be a comic, but I was starting in LA as somebody who had never been on stage and, um, I wasn't ready for it. I just wasn't, I had been on stage a couple of times and I thought I was super funny because I got to open for Sam Kennison. I had won a comedy competition and my friends thought I was funny in high school and then I got out to LA and ate a bag of dicks. Do you know the third open mic we were ever at was at the comedy store. And um, this guy's on stage and this dude walks in in a ski mask in a brown paper bag. I was with my cousin, Scott Wolf, TV Scott Wolf, and our buddy, Neil Coor, who I had gone to college with. He'd come out to LA with us. And the guy's sitting down, ski mask, eyes, you know, brown paper bag. And a comic sees him walk in and sit down. And he says something to him and he doesn't say anything. And he says something again. And the guy stands up and he said, I suggest you stop talking to me. And the whole place went silent. And everyone was like, we suggest the same thing, dude. The comic, I, it was the first time and I was young, but I'd never seen anyone get that rattled on stage before. There was this just terrible energy in the room. Turns out this guy, had robbed a liquor store down the street and had ducked into the comedy show to think he was going to evade the cops, but didn't take off a ski mask or get rid of the brown paper bag filled with money. <laughs> so he ended up getting arrested. Surprise, surprise. Uh, but that was a bananas, man. That time, that time here in LA, I learned a lot about what it took to be a comic and it wasn't as easy. I thought it was going to be easy, man. I was cra fourth time on stage. I opened for Kennison. Yeah, dude, this is easy. And then I got to LA and just got punched in the face repeatedly. Did I ever tell you the story about, Matt, have you heard the story about me auditioning for a boy band on my moped? So I was just looking for auditions. I didn't have an agent and I would look through this thing called backstage. I think I forget what it was called. And, um, I had seen two separate ads. Okay. Oh boy. The first ad was for the lead singer of a rock band. And the second ad was for, to be part of a boy band. Now I looked particularly young. I was 21. I looked really young. I'll try to post a picture from me from back then. But I looked, I'll, Matt, I'll send it to you. Um, and then I'll tell you a story about that fucking, when I got those pictures. Taken. Holy shit, don't let me forget that. So I, okay, we'll do the rock one first. So I, first of all, I had a moped. And my moped was, the muffler was fucked up. So it sounded like a Harley. Like, yeah, 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 right? And well, you would drive down the street and people would think Harley would come in and they turn around, they'd just see me on my little red moped. Me, me, you know? And can I tell you, I used to entertain at children's parties and um, the guy who, who owned the children's parties company, excuse me, that's the reflex, a lot of burping. He um, did not like you. You had to show up in costume. So everybody else had a car, but I had to, that means I had to drive through LA in my costume. And so I was like, the, and he assigned you what characters you were. So he assigned me clown, teenage mutant ninja turtle, 
and and Peter Pan. He was he told me I didn't have the body for a story. <laughs> he was like, Peter Pan, you can do. So I, yo, know, one time I'm on my moped dressed like Peter Pan. Like I, 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 on my Harley ped. And a cop pulls up next to me. And he rolls down his window and he goes, Hey. And I go, Yeah. And he said, You know, I was gonna give you a ticket for no helmet, but looks like your life's going bad enough as it is. And he just drove off. And I was like, this fucking guy. <laughs> yeah. Anyways. So what was I talking? Oh, oh, the audition. So I'm on my moped. And I also at the time had zero dollars. I was not making any money. I was making ends meet. Uh, boy, I sold water filters. I had some restaurant jobs, but I was not making any money. I also, at the time, this was pre-internet, so we just, you know, from what we knew about cities, it was smart to live downtown. So we booked, we got our apartment downtown LA because we were like, that's where all the action is. It is if you like homeless people and heroin. But so we were right there and I'm on my moped. And so I was supposed to audition for... um a uh, rock band. And so I'm going to try to explain to you because my wardrobe was not extensive, guys. I probably had, not probably, I had two pairs of shoes, I had a, a sneaker, and I had a black dress shoe. I probably had two pairs of jeans, a couple of white t shirts, but I didn't have any t shirt, t shirts, just plain colored or really, really dumb t shirts. I had two dress coats. A black one. Um, no, I didn't have the black one yet. I had one dress coat. And it was like a tan, almost linen, Don Johnson-y dress coat. I had a few bandanas because I had really long hair at the time. Oh, it wasn't that long. It was pretty long. Um, and that's it. So I show up to the rock band audition on my moped with my bandana my tan linen dress coat, a white t-shirt underneath, jeans, and my black dress shoes. And I knock on the dude's door and he goes, yeah. And I go, I'm Josh. And he was like, for the audition? And I said, yeah. And he goes, he looks at me up and down and he goes, you know, there's a rock band, right? And <laughs> Uh, yo, I thought I was so rock and roll with my bandana and my dress coat. And I go, yeah. And he was like, well, okay. He goes, you're here. So I come in and he goes, how old are you, dude? And this dude, this is like 90, oh, probably 1991. This dude had the complete, uh, you know, frizzed out hair. It was Guns N' Roses time, everybody. Is Guns N' Roses hair, you know, Guns N' Roses, he was dressed, you know, like a 90s rock guy, early 90s, late 80s rock guy. And here I am in my Don Johnson outfit with a bandana. And um, he was like, okay. He was like, do me a favor, at least for the audition, will you take off the dress coat? And I said, yep. And so we did a song. He said, did you prepare a song? I go, I don't know how to do that. And he was like, what do you mean? I said in the ad, prepare a song. I go, yeah, but I didn't know what that meant. And he was like, okay. He goes, what songs do you know how to sing? And I said, well, you know, and I, at the time I knew a, a bunch of Beatles songs, but I could, I, I listen early on right now, because I'm 3000 joints later, but early on my range was pretty good, man. I could get, I, I could sing a sweet child of mine. I could. I could, uh, if you go to my live shows, you know, a lot of the songs that I cover are women's songs when I parody them. So like I, I, I the audition itself, cause we sang that first song, the first song we sang, um, I think was sweet child of mine. No, I don't think it was. I don't think I did that in the audition, man. I, if I had thought that I was going to tell the story, I would have to do a deep dive of what I sung because I know it's in my notes. 
oh yeah, guys, I took notes about what I was doing in my audition. So I know it's in my notes what song I sung. So I'm gonna have to get back on that. But it went well. He was like, yo, he's like, you got a really good voice. I said, thanks. I go, you want to do another song? He goes, no. I said, why not? He goes, I can't have you out in front of, as the lead singer of our band. And I said, why not? He said, well, <laughs> that's exactly what he said. Well, look at you. He was like, I, you look like you're 12 and you're wearing a Don Johnson jacket. Like, this is not our look, but thank you very much. So I get back on my moped. Beep, beep. And the next walk-in audition, which was like two or three days later, was for a boy band. Now, for this, guys, I wore my tan Don Johnson jacket, a white t-shirt, uh, my acid wash jeans, oh, and also my dress shoes. But this time, the bandana, guys, wasn't around my head. It was around my neck. It was my one outfit, everybody. That's all I had. I didn't, ha I didn't have a lot of mix and match. And the white t-shirt was the only one that was going to go with the dress coat. But with this one on the dress coat, I pushed up the sleeve. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so I changed it up a little bit. Sleeves up. And I walk in. Because I think, I'm like, I look pretty young. I could fit into this boy band. Yo. I walked in. I looked like somebody's uncle. That's how, that is how young they all were. And they were all there with their mom and dad. Because they couldn't drive. And I walked in. And uh, the woman who was checking people in goes, are you here to pick somebody up? <laughs> and I was like, no, I'm here to audition. And she goes, for the boy band? And I was like, yeah. And she said, all right, sit down. Because it was an open call. Yo, it, it was so crazy when I walked into audition. Because we went in in groups, you know, just to see how you, enter, you were with other people. They were making, they were like, who's this, the babysitter? What's he doing in this group? It was crazy. Um, they were, the, the kids were such better dancers than me. That's, I think, not only did I not make it because I looked too old and was too old, not just look, but I think my dancing skills would have stopped me. I don't know if any of you have seen me do the running man. Uh, if I haven't showed it on this podcast, I will at some point in time, but it just looks like a dude running. It doesn't actually look like any kind of dance move, but yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know why I started talking about that. Did we, did somebody ask me that question? Yeah. They asked, uh, at what age did you know you wanted to be a comedian? Oh, well, there you go. Somehow we get to that one. Um, that also, by the way, that apartment was the first time I ever smoked a real weed. That fucked me up. Um, when am I coming to Rhode Island and I don't know how to watch a podcast by Andrea. <laughs> Hey, you old fuck. How do you not know how to watch a podcast? What do you mean you don't know how to watch a podcast? Andrea, now I, I don't feel bad calling you an old fuck because I know you're not going to see this. I can really say whatever I wanted about you. You don't know how to watch a podcast? I don't even know. How, my mom knows how to watch a podcast. She's 86. You just go on YouTube and just type in podcast and a bunch will pop up. Or you could type in, hey, man which is our podcast, and that one will pop up. I don't know how to watch. How would you know I was coming to Rhode Island if you don't know how to get on the internet? Eh, I don't know what I want to be in Rhode Island. When am I coming back to Spokane? Don't know. I uh, can't wait to see you in Reno in September. Not a question. Uh, what medic? Oh, yeah, Simon, he's okay. He's all right. Jacob was okay. Just one of those days. Uh, he's not feeling up to coming in, so no worries at all. I, I will tell you, man, you know, those early days of getting on stage were so crazy. The early days at the store, Joe Diaz and a bunch of other people, it was such a different time. The store was in a dead, dead, dark area. The, what I mean is a, a part of time. At that point in time, man, the, so they have, there's three, three rooms at the comedy store. There's the, uh, there's the main room, the original room. <laughs> For those of you watching, and that's Titus. You know what? Okay. Main room, the original room and the belly room. And, uh, the main room at the time, Fridays and Saturdays were the, it's, it's packed seven days a week now, but back then, man, that was where people went to do drugs and have sex with other people. That main room, 
recently a dude from that era came back to the comedy store and was like, where am I basically asked where, where does everybody have sex now? And I'm like that, nobody does that here anymore. But people used to fuck in the main room all the time. Yeah, the the the, the comedy man. You know what's weird? I'm gonna tell you what's weird. The comedy store main room might be the toughest stage for me in the country. I don't want to say it's my least favorite stage because I enjoy comedy and I enjoy doing stand up. But it, it that if that main not the OR, not the belly room, but the main room. For whatever reason, I never am at 100% in that room. And I can't quite figure out why. I'm so confident and so flowy on every other stage. But on that one, it, it, it's not, I'm not intimidated. I just never get a good feel for the crowd. I never get a good feel for the energy. Right when I walk out there, now I'm in my own head, right, when I do it. And, and so that when you get in your own head about shit, it's over, but I really need to, uh, I, I need to bear down a little bit on that. I've heard other people say that too. I'm not the only one, but the, ha- the comedy store is haunted as fuck. I, I don't think it's haunted. Although people have seen ghosts a plenty up in that motherfucker. Ah, I was trying not to say motherfucker the entire podcast and I just said it twice. Damn it. Um, okay. So guys, that's it for questions. And that is it. I, Cause I put the questions out so late. I know, I know I'm going to get like 9,000 questions by the end of the day. I apologize to those of you who are going to ask and not get your question answered. But let me tell you this, a couple more things. Then we're going to get everybody out of it. This is going to be a quick one. Um, I have, Oh, do other members of the family do stand up? Uh, nobody else does stand up. My son, other son, Trevor, and my other daughter, and my other daughter, and my daughter, Caitlin, come on stage with me every now and then. But they don't do stand up. Yeah, nobody else does stand up. But my cousin Scott and uh, cousin Gary are both actors. Um, but yeah, man, listen, I am so, uh, I am so, I haven't really talked, I don't really talk politics. I, so let's actually not get into this. I have a urban dictionary term for you. you oh, you do? I do, yeah. Yeah, that'll take me off the politics. I don't want to talk <laughs> politics. Go. <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, it is called the Alabama Hot Pocket. Ooh, Alabama Hot Pocket. Well, I'm really... I get five questions and a guess? Yeah. Okay, so I'm really... Alabama... I'm confused why Alabama... So I'm going to take that part of the guess out. A hot pocket um, is, is e- it's either a vagina or a butthole. Okay. So is the, is the hot pocket either the vagina or the butthole? It is. Okay. Does it uh, involve feces? Yes. Yeah. Why? I mean, we're in Alabama. <laughs> that's why. <laughs> that's where the Alabama comes in. Um. Is there any cooking involved? No. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know if I was that kind of hot pocket. You know, they used to sell the ones that with weed. They were called pot pockets. <laughs> they were amazing. All right. So we have a butthole or a vagina with, okay. Is it, oh, this has got to be so gross. Is there sex involved? There is. Uh, I knew I wasn't going to like this. I was hoping you were going to say no. Is it? Is there, okay, I get one more guess. Mm-hmm. Is it man and woman? Yes. Okay. And, and now it's time for the guess? Uh, if you want to keep asking questions, you can. How many questions have I asked? Five. Yeah, I just want to do that. Okay. Okay. Do you need a hint or anything? No. Okay. An Alabama hot pocket is when a dude puts poop... Uh, it's when, okay, ready? Mm-hmm. It's when a dude puts, it's when a woman is pooping and a dude pushes it back in with his penis, the Alabama hot pocket. Please tell me I'm wrong. 
You are wrong. Whew. Would you like another guess? Mm, Phone a friend. No, I'm ready for this one. Okay. So the reason that Alabama is involved is uh, because the good old redneck boys, when bored in Alabama, would have sex with pig troughs or large wet piles of mud. So what an Alabama hot pocket is, it's when you put poop in the vagina and then have sex with it. Uh, I had it right, except the wrong hole. And uh, the woman who is on the receiving end of the Alabama hot pocket is often referred to as a porky piggin. Let me tell you, if that woman is, first of all, who's fucking mud? <laughs> Can I just get into that? Why are you fucking mud? You're just sticking your dick in mud? I mean, I guess don't knock it till you try it, but why are you having sex with mud? Come on now. This seems real sad. I'm going to go fuck some mud. Well, I'd rather have you fuck the mud than the pig. But you know what? I mean, can't you just jerk off like a normal person? Why are you going to fuck the ground? And are you taking the mud out of the ground and putting it in a jar or something? Or are you just out there fucking mud? Second of all, Guys, leave my once the poop comes out, leave it alone. Why are we gonna play with it? Leave it out. Leave, I, this is my theory on every bodily anything that comes out of my body. I don't want it back. I don't want to touch it. Spit, semen, tears, piss, shit, vomit. When it leaves my body, it leaves my body for a reason. I don't want it back. You urine drinkers, you. No, no, thank you. No, thank you. When it leaves the body, good riddance, good riddance. The body's like, let's get rid of it. Let's get rid of it. It's not like, hey, I, I need that back. The body does not get rid of things it doesn't need. It does need, it does need. It get rid of, gets rid of the waste. So let's stop. And, and ladies. I have to assume that nobody has let this happen to them. I'm just assuming, even in Alabama, not even even, anywhere in the world, if some dude is like, hey, I would like to put some of this feces in your no-no hole, you got to say no. That is a hard and flaccid pass. That is a pass across the board. No thank you. Boy, Matt, that was... Did you? It was did the you, best I could do on short notice. Did you just Google <laughs> worst possible? Uh, that is a that is a rough one. I, you know what's crazy is that what I do love about Urban Dictionary is that you can just go in and make up whatever term you want. Mm -hmm. I really like. I saw when I I was I was uh, for research for a project. I was googling terms like uh like uh, inappropriate terms for religions or gender or races and i there was one for the jews and being a jew that i had never heard before that i've started using that people don't love but i think is pretty funny have you ever heard <laughs> okay have you ever heard of a jew being called an oven dodger <laughs> <laughs> I have not. <laughs> yeah, that fucking killed me. Yeah, guys, because those of us that are here, probably somebody in the family was a bit of an up and dodger, you know? For those of you who don't get the reference, good for you. But, you know, I, I'll tell you, man, when we were on Chelsea, we did some terrible things. I'm so glad. Well, I'm, I'm not glad. But if those shows... You, if you guys are wondering why can't I go on, everybody, like you can watch old Tosh episodes, you can watch old Tonight Show, old whatever, old Daily, old uh, Daily Show, but you can't watch any of the old Chelsea Lately shows. They took them down. They scrubbed the internet of them. Not because what we said was so inappropriate. It's some other things, but I'm glad that they did because we'd all been canceled. Do you know? So Chewy was a short little Mexican dude who was on the show and he was, he was also pre-show was a porn star. Did you know that? Did you know Chewy did porn? No. Oh my God. So it, it is, I don't know if you're, if you like to 
find the deep dark corners of the internet, but those po- those videos are out there. If you just type in Chewy Bravo porn, you're gonna get more than you paid for it because it costs zero dollars. <laughs> <laughs> but yo, we used to have him say on the show, "How much does the holla cost?" Because holla, for those of you who don't know, is a type of bread. So how much does the holla cost? We had, okay, I'll tell you something else we did. Ready for this? There was a bit where there there are these two Asian people who worked in the office. And um, they carried somebody around the office on a rickshaw. And the name of the sketch, ready for this? Just like this. This is how it was announced. Arrive me alone. And when the and when they would walk in, there would be a gong sound, and they would mouth like this. Asian people would be mouthing, and white people would do an Asian voice to dub over them. It was the single most racist thing I think we ever did, but everybody at the time. Seemed to think it was kind of funny. <laughs> Boy, times have changed, man. That was not that long ago. Yes, it was. It was a full decade ago. It was a full decade ago. But I will tell you this. I think that there is a place for absurdity, because that's what that was, absurdity, and ridiculous stereotypes. There is a place for, there is a place for absurdity and humor. There just is. And I think things can be racial and not racist. If you're, I don't think showing Asian people carrying a rickshaw is racist because I think culturally it is predominantly probably in Asia, right? So like, it's like saying, if I said that if a a Chinese people have squintier eyes than Americans and someone was like, if someone said that's racist, not, it's not racist. It's racial and true and factual, right? So you're not saying anything negative about the person. It's like if I said to you, uh, Pete Davidson looks a little downsy, right? It, I'm, I'm not, some people would get offended, but why? Down syndrome people, people with Down syndrome look a little different. So. If I was going to, if I described Pete Davidson, if I was like, Pete Davidson looks like a skinny Samoan, you wouldn't get offended. Or if I said, Hey, that person looks like, you know what they look like? They look like a, like a librarian. Yeah. That wouldn't be offensive. But if I said that person looks downsy, that shouldn't, that's a, just a description. It's not a plus or a negative on people with down syndrome. You don't think people with down syndrome would be insulted and in being compared to Pete Davidson? Maybe. I don't know. He's got a nine inch dick. I mean, that seems to be something that everybody's aiming for. (laughs) I'm just saying like we, I I tell a story in my show right now where I use the word retarded and um, people get really offended. I just can't quite figure out. I think they think they're supposed to be offended because if I asked you, if you were offended by the word retarded and I asked you why now, if you called somebody, a retard. I understand that because you're making a negative connotation about people who are retarded. But retarded is a actual word that means an actual thing. So if I was going to, if I used the word retarded, um, it, I, I'd be curious why you were offended. Because you're offended because somebody else told you that word is offensive. Yeah, what do you think about people getting offended on behalf of other people who aren't offended? Yeah, I think that's so ridiculous. And clearly retarded people aren't offended because they don't... Because they're retarded. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I can cut that out. <laughs> no, but you know... <laughs> but this is the exact part I'm saying about just... You gotta have, be able to have fun with it, man. I can, I, I don't, I have no problem with people making Jewish jokes 
as long as the intent is not like, I hate Jews and you're filthy and I hope you'd all die because you control the weather with lasers through your eyes. You know, that kind of stuff. But you're making Jew jokes, or Holocaust jokes, oven dodger, funny. White dude jokes, funny. You know, I think we have to be able to laugh at each other. The more we separate each other in things like this, now we also have to be grownups and know the difference between this is a racist joke or this is a racist thing that people shouldn't be saying. This is a prejudicial thing that people shouldn't be saying and just people goofing and being funny. I really think we, and I, when people will be like, oh, you, you know, woke, everybody's this fucking, I, I know the idea of woke is actually making people vote a certain way in their politics. I think that's silly only because it's not changing us at all, guys. The the the, I, the time of cancel culture and all that stuff that kind of hit its height over COVID, but that's not real anymore. The woke stuff isn't real. There are still some people who feel that way, but it's not ruining anybody's careers. And I would say that both sides are equally woke in a different way. You know, and they're ba- it, both sides are canceling things in a in a in a similar way. You're canceling it for being woke. You're canceling it for not being woke. It's all stupid to me. It's all stupid. We're grown ups and adult enough to know when somebody is saying something that is meant to be hurtful and not meant for funny. Like it's, I, I, I and maybe I, 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 I clearly, I know I'm going to be in the minority on this because people are very sensitive, but I would just say, what do you, what do you, what is it? What are you really offended by a word? Nah, man. Now there are some words, yeah, I get it, get it. But even the hard words for the Jew stuff, man, it doesn't, I can't let you bother me. I can't, just because you don't like me, I can't let that word bother me. That's my point of view, you know? Um, All right. Oh, already an hour. That was fast, Matt. Yes, it was. Comedianjoshwolf.com for tour dates. Guys, every Monday night, Las Vegas, I got my residency. The 21st of August in LA for a great show at the improv, Elton Caste. And I, I read it off earlier, but Haunted Homies, it's a cool show to come to. Super funny, lots of great stories. 24th in Palm Springs, me, Jacob, Marty, Thomas Dopas Yola. That is a weed, a small weed festival. Um, but the comedy show at night won't be. So if you want to come to just a comedy show, you can do that. That'll be at 7.30 on the 24th. But the podcast with me and Yola and Jacob and Marty will be earlier in the day. And then if you want to hang out and smoke with us, you've all, I mean, I, I know I hear people all the time online, I just want to smoke with you. Come through, dude. And then the High Live is coming back, everybody. Super excited about that. Our next time on the road, we're in Columbus, Ohio, um, August. August? I don't know. Something in August, 9th and 10th, I think. Columbus, Ohio at the Funny Bone, Arlington, Virginia uh, at the Arlington Draft House, the 16th and 17th of August. Guys, this was fun. Not as much fun without Boomer, though. He'll be back. All right, everybody. We love you. Uh, And thanks for tuning in. So much gratitude for all of you. For real, for real, for real. Um, uh, this is such a cool community and I really do want to, um, you know, I've learned from th- online about the relationship that I have with Jacob that, and I, I didn't think this was going to happen, but it has been happening and it's super humbling, but people talking about how my relationship, our relationship with Jacob and I's are, is healing other people's relationship with their parents or healing other people's relationship with their kids. And so that is really something that means a lot to both of us and is going to be for me moving forward. Part of my purpose, man. Um, if, if Jacob and I can somehow help, um, you and your kid or you and your parent in, in their relationship by watching what we do and how much fun we have together and coming out to the live shows helps you guys. And you want to hang out together, seeing families together is always super cool. Um, so thank you so much. Keep sending those messages in. It means so much to us. And, um, next week, an amazing interview with Jason Ellis, 
You are not going to want to miss that one. And if you didn't catch the one last week with Ron Funches, some of my funny, my favorite moments in any podcast we have ever done, Ron made me laugh so hard that entire podcast. Guys, thank you so much for watching Hey Man. Thank you so much for listening to Hey Man. We love you. We'll see you on the road. Take it easy. Hey, if you like this podcast you just watched, you're going to love the one I'm popping up in your face right now. Check it out.